it's a sense of pride being able to say our fans own this place and, and the fans are very invested into the club. When you think of what a football club represented in their earliest iterations throughout history, what do you think of? Clubs representing their community rather than a global brand? Maybe a focus on producing talent rather than purchasing it? Supporters having a say in how their club is run? At a time where some feel like football's losing some of its sheen, that it's completely bereft of the traditions that built up the sport and their clubs, it's nice to see that there are still some examples of a traditional club operating in a modern top league, such as Pamplona's Club Atletico Osasuna. When you romantize football, you have this idea of what it should be like, and I think in, in a way Osasuna kind of envelops all that. Osasuna are in their fourth consecutive La Liga season, and as they are one of just four clubs that is member-owned in all of Spain, their success at the top level makes them all the more unique. In this profile video, we're looking at Osasuna's club story and how they are a great club for any football purists to follow. Hello again and welcome to Rabona TV. As per usual, I'm Adrian, your guide for this video, and I'll be joined by Hector Casteltort, who is responsible for international communications at Osasuna. Yes, a representative from the club will actually speak in this video. Amazing. And lastly, guys, we have something to give back to those living in the USA and Canada, a signed Chimi Avila jersey. Oh the link to the giveaway is in the description below, and the final day to enter is March 7th, 2023. So best of luck. Now then, let's get into why you should be watching Osasuna. Café Kutz in Pamplona's Plaza del Castillo was a hotspot back in the day. And as we have seen on so many occasions when diving into the foundational history of many football clubs, cafes, pharmacies, wherever, often made for a great meeting place. It was here at Café Kutz on October 24th, 1920, where Club Atletico Osasuna was founded. As part of their founding, the original club members agreed that the club should be apolitical and should have a Basque name as an homage to their locale in the Navarre province in northern Spain. Osasuna was the name they landed on, which in Basque means health, strength, and vigor, and has been a sporting pillar in Pamplona. Of course, you may know Pamplona as the city that's famous for the running of the bulls during San Fermin festival. But as mentioned, Osasuna's place in the community has been hugely important through the ups and the downs of their journey to being La Liga mainstays. As far as historical La Liga rankings, as in accumulated since the start back in 1928, Osasuna ranks 14th in the historical rankings. Their most fruitful eras were from the early 80s to mid 90s, as well as the 21st century, where they competed in a Copa del Rey final, as well as had a UEFA Cup run ended at the semi-finals back in the 2006-2007 season. Throughout their history, however, the club has mandated itself to represent the people of Pamplona and by extension Navarre by always having a player from their academy within the team. But in fact, they've gone further than that in practice, as Osasuna aims to always have a spine of homegrown talent from their Tajonar Academy. You cannot understand Osasuna without a Tajonar without its academy. When Osasuna starts working on, on the roster for the year, there's always academy players. There's always that backbone that is the, the, the academy. And then to that, we start bringing players from outside to complement. In here, it's kind of like, okay, what do we have here in our academy that is gonna be able to help us flourish? And then once we have kind of like a backbone from our academy players, we start pulling in the pieces and bringing in players that we might not have in our academy that have a, a certain role. And something that is very unique also about an academy kind of gives us that sense of pride as well and that the players understand it is that our first team players, they go down to our academy and they coach the youth kids. So that's something that you don't see every day, that you don't see a first team player for a team going down with this academy and, and just starts coaching them and telling them like, hey, you know, like, Maybe do this, that, this is how you need to, to, to block a defender, this is how you need to, to, to hit the ball, to make the pass, etc, etc. When you think about it, Tajonar it's, it's a sense of pride for everyone. And, and the fact that we have players that come in and that help our youth also kind of elevates the sense of importance that we have for our academy. And they are developing a great track record when it comes to developing talent. As important players in the fabric of Spain's football history, such as Cesar Pilacueta, Javi Martinez, Nacho Monreal, Raul Garcia, and Mikel Merino, were all developed at Osasuna's Tajonar Academy. 
Now you might find me saying this a few times during this video, but Osasuna has a familial vibe to it. The people here are very passionate when it comes to the things that they care about. Uh, and they're also very loyal. So I think that also is shown in the way that they go for Osasuna and they feel about Osasuna. But that feeling extends beyond how they look to promote from within on the sporting side of things. But the supporters actually have a say in how the club is run. There are now just four professional football clubs in Spain who are actually owned by their members, or socios. Athletic Club, FC Barcelona, Real Madrid, and of course, Osasuna. The socio model is an interesting one as it gives supporters the chance to have their voices heard when it comes to the actual running of the club they support or they're a member of. While the members don't have a say in the day-to-day -day operations, such as deciding on who the new coach should be or whether they need a new nutritionist for the first team, they do have a say in the direction the club takes by way of electing a president, amongst other decisions that will seek the approval of the club members before going ahead with them. Now, of course, the members are viewed as the owners of the club, meaning they don't have a wealthy benefactor to cover the cost of running said club. They don't have someone to look to in order to give them the cash injection they need to make new signings. Everything has to be generated by the club in that regard, which provides a member-owned club some difficulties that others don't really need to worry about. Since we're not privately owned, uh, finance is one of those challenges. Uh, you know, we don't have that entrance of money that would continue, you know, that, that would just keep on coming. We just have what we have. But while it makes things more difficult, it also is a point of pride for Osasuna, as it all adds to the overall sense of community or family that the club is naturally promoting. It's a sense of pride, being able to say, our fans own this place and, and the fans are very invested into the club. Yes, we do We do have maybe some limitations, as I said, financially, but it, it also compensates with the fact that our people are very proud about who we are and they wouldn't change that for the world. Would you say that any victory that you have feels like it, it means more to them because of the sort of business model they have, because of this connection that they have to the club? I would say so. It reflects the fact that you're able to say, hey, we, we are here and we are competing against a big team. When we went to Santiago Bernabeu and we draw, people around Pamplona were just static. We did a heck of a game, first of all. Like, let's just be honest there. We, we played very well. And secondly, we were able to, to get a point in the stadium against a team that has a lot of money. And one of the aspects that the fans also had a say in, the design of their now revamped iconic stadium, El Sadar. Yes, members took part of the biggest vote in Osasuna's history to actually choose one of the five renovation projects that was presented to them for El Sadar. And the outcome was completed in 2021, extending their capacity to over 23,000 seats and bringing the fans closer to the pitch to create a true cauldron-like atmosphere. Just as some of the biggest clubs in the world are always referred to alongside their iconic stadium, Osasuna deserves that treatment as well, as El Sadar was actually voted as the World Stadium of the Year in 2021. Osasuna also has some of the best support in La Liga, and when you couple that with the renovations made to the stadium, it's a formidable place to visit for their opponents. The fans will not leave the stadium, even if we're losing, until after the final whistle. The final whistle is blown and the fans will stay there, you know, supporting the players. So I think that's very unique. If you look a lot of a lot of times when the home team is losing, a lot of fans start leaving and you can start seeing that on TV and how like the seats are starting to empty out. But here you don't see that. People stick through and they wait until the final whistle. And once that is, they still stay here and they still clapping and supporting the players. In fact, even when Osasuna were in the Segunda División, there were still supporters on the waiting list for season tickets. That sense of being a part of the club, of being a part of the family, still applies even when they aren't in La Liga, which took some time to find their consistency in once again. But it won't come as a surprise to you that they all continue to stick together through the difficult times, from the supporters all the way up to the club president. Osasuna made an incredible decision when they brought on former Numancia coach Jacoba Arasate for the 2018-19 Segunda División season. After getting relegated to Spain's second division in 2017, they could only manage finishing in eighth 
in the 2017-18 Segunda season. But with believing in Arasate, Los Rojillos stormed to a first place finish in the Segunda División and they haven't looked back since. Well, not entirely. Osasuna are in their fourth consecutive season in La Liga and have found some great consistency in finishing 10th, 11th, and 10th again last season, the 21-22 season. However, it hasn't all been plain sailing for Osasuna, as hardship has come along by way of poor results, but as alluded to, they have always stuck together. In their second consecutive season in La Liga, the 2020-21 season, Osasuna were floundering, dropping as low as 20th, dead last in the league, and occupying one of the relegation places for eight consecutive match days. From October 24th to January 24th, a span of 13 La Liga matches, they didn't win a single game. In most instances, at most clubs, you would hear the bell tolling for the manager, their time all but over at the club as they move on to someone else. But Osasuna Sporting Director Braulio Vasquez had this to say, quote, Arasate is the captain of the ship, Vitor, his assistant coach, is the second in command. The rest of the coaching staff are also in charge of the boat, and then the rest of us, sporting director, players, everyone else, are part of the crew. Whether the ship makes it to shore or we sink, we're going to do it with the same captain. And remember, this was at a time where the club was struggling and at the midway point of the season, and it actually looked like they were favorites to be relegated. That shows you the level of commitment. I mean, when you're in a, in a league like, like in Spain, and to have that commitment of saying, hey, we might be 13 games without a win in league play, but we're gonna stick with this guy, and we're gonna stick through with this guy. That was in January. At that point, they were second to last relegation. They finished the season in 11. There's an idea of how we want to play, and there's an idea, and there's consistency. And we're not just kind of like picking and choosing, we're, we're, we're sticking to that idea. Arsate is still in charge of Osasuna, and they are looking like they're on track to finish as high, perhaps higher, than their three previous seasons in La Liga. And they've done so where they don't have a financial backer, they have to raise funds themselves through ticket sales and commercial partnerships, some of which were made possible thanks to their stadium renovation. On top of that, they have managed to preserve their traditional values. The members of the club have a say in how it's run and share in the club's victories. They aren't just seen as a cash cow for the club, but part of the family. Plus, you factor in their focus on ensuring that the presence of their Tajonar Academy is not only felt in the first team, but makes up the spine of it. Yeah, I mean, you can see why I refer to them as a football purist dream, because as Hector mentioned in the intro of this video, when you romantize football or you romantize soccer, uh, you know, you have this idea of what it should be like. And I think in, in a way, Osasuna kind of envelops all that. I absolutely agree which makes it all the more impressive in how they are performing these days. Now, of course, if you were to ask Hector about expectations, he'd take an understandably grounded stance. They recently asked that to our CEO and, and our sporting director, and they said, you know, one of our successes is to stay in, in, in Primera División. When the season starts, that's our goal, to stay. Once we get there, the sky's the limit. We, we, don't put a, we don't put a ceiling to our dreams. We, we just go as far as we can go. You know, being just a couple of points away from, from European spots, being in the semifinals of the Copa del Rey, I think we, we are having a, a successful season and hopefully it doesn't just stay there and, and we are able to keep going. Grounded, but still ambitious. So an acknowledgement of what they've achieved, but as Hector pointed out, for them to be challenging for European places and having already made the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey against Athletic Club, it's clear that Osasuna is getting incrementally better season upon season. And they're doing it the old way, focusing on building from within, keeping the supporters engaged and involved in decisions that the club takes, and sharing in defeat and victory all the same. A big thank you to Hector for taking the time to speak with me about Osasuna. It absolutely means a lot. And the Rabona TV family will now be following them very closely this season, I'm sure. Also, a big thank you to you for watching this video. And don't forget to enter the draw for a signed Chimia Villa jersey. Again, only open to USA and Canadian residents. Beyond that, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.